I'm Chosen Architect, and this is Project Architect 2. So today I've got some pretty huge plans. I want to get a storage set up. That's gonna ultimately be one of the primary focuses of today's episode, but I also wanna get sort of a small little setup that is going to somewhat automate EMC and hopefully be scalable. Now, this EMC setup is going to involve an iron farm, and we can actually turn iron, even though it doesn't have EMC, into EMCable things. And this may seem kind of like it was unintentional, but believe me, it is, because it still requires you to do a step in crafting. For example, the Philosopher's Stone, right? We could use the Philosopher's Stone to produce resources, but you have to craft with it, which means you'll have to eventually set up an auto crafting solution to this. And all of these minor EMC gains, they're really nothing compared to what the end game is actually going to want. And it's not really going to help you per se towards that end goal, except for allowing you to have access to resources. So as soon as I can start to produce even a small amount of EMC, we should be able to hopefully start scaling up our infrastructure which that will help with in-game. Now, this is where I'm going to ask of you a couple of things. Down in the comments below, if you have found a really awesome EMC generator method, let me know down in the comments below, as I would love to hear what ways that you guys so far have figured out to generate EMC. Because I'm sure there's a ton of awesome methods. Now, the method that I plan on using today is going to involve an iron farm, which will just passively generate iron for us. And what we can do is that we can then use our Philosopher's Stone to convert said iron. So if we take a look at the recipe and what iron is actually used for, we should see that there is a way to manipulate this and to turn it into different resources. One, for example, is Ender Pearls. And Ender Pearls do have an EMC value, which is kind of nice. Um, now we should also, I believe, be able to convert gold into iron as well, but now gold doesn't have an EMC value, but you can also turn iron into gold. So if you're lacking on gold or lacking on diamonds, you can level up into that. You could also take your gold, turn or take your iron and turn it into gold and then turn it into diamonds. All of these are gonna all be equivalent. Um, so it's not like these values have changed or anything. Uh, it's just that diamond does have a value. So yes, you can take iron and gold and convert that into EMC and that is perfectly fine to do. Um, and same goes for Ender Pearls. You can use the four iron and turn this into EMC, which is what I plan on doing today. And this is going to be a nice, small, incremental way of generating EMC. Now I am gonna need a little bit of lava for this as I'm going to be making a couple of these iron farms and each one of them requires a lava bucket. Um, so I can utilize some tanks here and I should be able to fill this up. This holds 32 buckets just by itself. And if you hold down shift and scroll wheel, you can actually turn it into bucket mode, which does allow us to use it like a bucket and pick things up. Now, another useful thing that I definitely recommend making is believe it or not, a waystone. So we should, or a warp stone. We should be able to use this warp stone here to be able to teleport anywhere we're at to go directly back home, for example. So now it's time for me to take a little trip back into the nether, and I just need to get down here, yes, and bucket up a bunch of this lava. Oh, this is gonna be great. Okay, so while this is in bucket mode, I can then just start picking as much of this lava up as I need, and I'm gonna need a little bit of it, at least getting started. Later on, we'll definitely be able to automate this. And now, by the way, I should be able to use our warp stone to head right back home. Oh, it's so nice to be able to have that. Now, when crafting this, this is gonna be kind of funny. There's nothing like placing lava in your base. Make sure to turn it off of bucket mode so you can place it down. But there we go. We now have our first lava source in a bucket. And there we go. Iron farms are for the win. Now, iron farms are not gonna work on their own without villagers we're still going to need villagers for this to work. Now, I do wanna try my best to explain how the iron farms actually work um, and why I'm mathing things out the way I'm mathing them out. Now, by default, one iron farm is going to produce basically iron or an iron golem, and I think the amount may vary, but it's gonna be producing an iron golem every four minutes. And that iron golem may give more than one iron. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but if we take that math and we have four iron farms, then we should, be basically producing an iron golem every minute. And if we add another set, we should now be producing an iron golem every 30 seconds, 
or at least so my math maths out. I will say chosen math isn't always correct. <laughs> so correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong here. But either way, I feel like eight is going to be a great number to get started and is going to hopefully help us generate some EMC. But we are going to need ourselves some villagers. And on the map, I actually see a new village right over here. I'm uh, definitely going to go check that out. So I definitely think it's time to head off in this direction. But first, the, what is... Is that the FBI? <laughs> the FBI is here. Oh, no. <laughs> is that what that says? Oh, God. Oh, that kind of threw me off. But yes, I need to make my way all the way over here. And I don't think I took my glider, did I? Oh, yes, there I did. There I did. Okay, so we've got a little ways to go. And hopefully I can fly all the way over there. But there is a village over here. And it looks like it's a really big one. Oh, yes, this is uh, this is a very nice looking village. Okay, so we definitely want to loot it, but the main thing I want to loot from it is villagers. And we are going to use this as a time to really get into villagers. So I'm going to be picking them up and putting them in my backpack. And this is hopefully going to help uh, with uh, the noises that they make. And I also want to pop in here and grab these work tables. And these are from an extended villager mod. You can see more villagers and there's all kinds of other trades that these guys will offer. And this is going to be super powerful. And I definitely want to grab the skulls when I can. These all have EMC values on them. Ooh, now this building looks really cool, but I am going to nab you and nab you and also you are, are are you good yeah i think all these are good look at this have ourselves a brewing stand i'm gonna go ahead and nab that and there's a bunch of different types of flowers but there's also <laughs> lapis gold all kinds of stuff and oh nice a peace symbol and there's a barrels up here too oh this is a parkour course okay i've got to i've got to try this oh i'm probably going to butcher this maybe not Oh, I'm doing good so far. Oh, there we go. All right, up I go. Where's my next step? Oh, right here. Perfect. Hey, <laughs> I gained access to a barrel. Uh, not much in here. Ooh, that's actually not too bad though. I'm gonna grab this. Oh, I'm gonna take that shovel. That shovel's way better than what I have. That's pretty cool. And is there anything else up here? Surely there's stuff up here. Yeah, there's another barrel over here, but there's no, like, parkour course to get to it. Ooh, we just got our first lost knowledge from RF Tools Dimensions, which I do want to mention, RF Tools Dimension is in here, and we are going to be utilizing it later on. It is going to take a little bit to get into, but that mod is going to be incredibly powerful, and in my opinion, was one of the foundations of the original project architect and one of my favorite parts and it's gonna be really fun to build out custom dimensions okay so let's see what's up here let's go ahead and dive into here is there anything more up top oh there's some redstone up here actually and i did happen to have some barrels on me oddly enough i'm gonna get rid of this we can use barrels to scale up okay oh it just has some redstone yeah i'm gonna nab these Real quick. Oh, that's a neat way of doing daylight sensors. Huh. And I'm also going to grab these redstone lamps. Might as well. That's honestly perfect. Okay. So, uh, with all of that looted, we should be able to head back down. And I'm definitely going to pop off these signs here. <laughs> Don't know what that was. And I'm going to nab these too. Now, keep in mind, we are definitely the bad guy. Yeah. Uh, after raiding a village... I have never felt worse. Ooh, now this thing looks really cool. There's arrows on the side. Is there anything hidden down here? Oh, there's an emerald on the wall. Is there anything else? Not that I'm seeing. But th there are things here. Huh. Now, I never know with places like this if there's going to be hidden loot or not. So it's always worth checking. Uh, I just don't want to tear the thing down right now. Oh, nice. So there's beehives with honey in it. If we have a shear, we can always come back. And there's a bottle of enchanting on this item frame. Now, there are ways of getting bottles of enchanting in here, a ton of different ways. But it is kind of nice to actually get this early on because I believe we can use this right away to make an experience crystal. All right. I want a quick way to be able to get back here. I noticed there's like all kinds of animals and stuff here, too, which is going to be super nice. I'm going to nab this waystone. And we should be able to head right back home. 
Oh, man. Waystones is still one of my favorite mods of all time. Now, even though I have myself a nice selection of villagers, I still want to make sure that I have an unlimited amount of villagers. So what I want to do is I want to start to build my villager breeding stack, and it's so easy with easy villagers to be able to do this. You just need a few hoppers, uh, of course, an inventory, and we're going to start to build this sort of backwards. So connected to this, we want an incubator. And the reason why we want an incubator, it's going to speed up the process of turning baby villagers into regular full size villagers and they'll end up in here. Now, on top of this, I'm going to place a hopper and uh, this is where the actual villager breeder is going to go just like so. And we have to put two villagers in here in order for this to work. Uh, but let's go ahead and do the farmer on top of this next before we do that. And the farmer is actually a way of just auto farming without having a bunch of villagers in your world. So you place the farmer in here. And this is also going to require, uh, for one, a crop, which you can kind of see it growing there. But it's also going to require a villager. So in total, you should need, I believe, three villagers to get this started. You need two <laughs> villagers in here. And then you also need a villager up here that will farm for you. And so what should happen is carrots should be produced. Those carrots will then feed the breeder. And then the breeder will then produce the babies. The babies will go in the incubator. And then last but not least, we should have this whole barrel uh, end up filled with villagers. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Now, because I absolutely hate the look of just raw hoppers sticking out everywhere, I am going to cover these with trap doors and it makes this setup look a lot cleaner. Now, since I kind of don't like the look of hoppers, I think for this next part where we're going to be working on building up our iron farm, I think I'm gonna switch over to pipes. Now, something cool, I did make a texture pack for the pipes mod. It's called Darker Pipes, and it's what is actually being used in this pack that makes these pipes less neon, which I think fits a whole lot more into a lot of other mods, for example, including Mechanism, uh, where we don't have these insanely bright, solid, flat neon colors. I tried my best. I think I did an okay job, uh, and we can actually see the way these look right here. You can see they have actually textures on them, so they're not just one solid flat color, uh, which I thought was pretty nice, pretty nice. And uh, yeah, they're not gonna stick out hopefully as much like a sore thumb like they typically do. Now, I also want this to be a little ways out and this tree right here is absolutely huge. Um, and I think it'll be the perfect place to set up our iron farms. We should be able to set up eight of these and we have them all going in one stack. And then essentially I'm going to use my pipes to carry them down all into one inventory. So now perfect, I have all of these guys set up and I love how the textures carry over for each zombie, allowing it to be a different type. I, I think that's actually hilarious. Uh, but essentially on the back, I want my pipes to be connected like so and wrap around. Now I'm gonna have to use the pipe wrench to wrench these like this. And that is going to allow this to then pull the items out and should insert them into the chest. I'm also going to need to get over a little bit so that way I can access this side as well. And voila, all of the pipes are now set up and I should be able to put this stuff back in place and we should be able to leave it alone. But this also is expandable. So we should be able to also expand this, uh, you know, as we continue on. But for right now, I'm going to place the pipe right down here and I'm going to place my barrel right there. And that should be almost it because <laughs> we still need to get our villagers in here, which we're going to need eight of. So now with eight of these guys locked and loaded and ready to go, bam, just like that. These should all start producing iron and it's going to be pretty noisy. Now, if this does become a very loud, noisy thing, uh, I, I did try to move it a little bit away from the base, but like the zombie noises and stuff, we can actually reduce that sound by using this button right here. And what I can do is I can muffle this sound specifically to this area by setting an anchor point, and then I can define the radius to, for example, 16, and then hit accept. Now we have a specific location to where we're going to reduce our sounds. And for example, we can reduce the sounds of the zombies and so on and so forth, like spe specifically zombies. And then there's also gonna be the iron golem sounds that we're probably going to want to remove from here as well. Uh, and we can search those. So we can do iron golem underscore golem. And these are all of the golem sounds that will end up getting made. I'm gonna leave it a little bit because I wanna be able to hear it. And then also villagers. 
<laughs> Villager is probably going to be a big one too. And now with that set up, we can make ourselves the Philosopher's Stone. And this does have an EMC value, so definitely make sure to learn this thing. Uh, it does require some glowstone, but we've already gone to the nether, and so we're almost ready to go. Now, this has a lot of interesting functions. For example, we can convert mobs from one mob to another, but you do have to have a Klein star in your inventory that has some EMC stored in in order for that to work, which we haven't gotten into just yet. But we definitely will. It can also be used as a crafting table, a portable crafting table, which is pretty uh, pretty neat. But it can also swap out blocks in the game. So we can convert this, for example, into sand, into grass, back into sand, and so on and so forth. Which is another interesting little mechanic that this can do. But what we're going to be using this for is for taking some of our iron. Hopefully, this is going to be producing iron. Um, and I'm hoping, by the way, I can pull from the sides of this. I actually did not. I have no way of testing that yet. Uh, but I essentially want to convert our iron that we get from this after waiting four minutes for this to initiate. And then I want to convert that into enderpearls. Now, we can convert the iron that we've processed from mining, but the, the amount that you actually get from the raw ore after it's been processed is not going to be an increase in any way. Uh, it is actually going to be exactly the same as if you just pulled out an enderpearl. So don't use the ones that you got via mining because it makes more sense to just mine those or to just process them. But uh, now that we have iron, like this is going to be just an infinite supply of iron, hopefully. And it looks like that four minutes has been up and we get 36 iron after that initial process. So all of this should have happened. And uh, let's go ahead and get this converting. That's gonna be pretty cool. So we put this in here and four of these iron produce ender pearls. And in that operation, we ended up getting 9,000 uh, EMC, which is pretty decent. Now this right now is still 100% manual but I want to make this fully automated, which is going to take a little bit of time today, but we will hopefully get that done and it's going to be a pretty cool process. But before we do that, I do want to start working on our early game storage and how we're actually going to handle our items. And since we're gonna be using a lot of RF tools through this playthrough, I think that utilizing RF tools storage for storage is going to be one of the best early options. But I do want to mention that you can also start off with Ars Nouveau and the storage lectern is also a very cool magical storage solution that is very, very cheap as well. I feel like these two do fall into the same boat as they do require about the same amount of effort to get up and running. RF tools, however, is going to require power just basic power, but it does require power nonetheless. So we are going to have to worry about a little bit more. And I think that's what puts it on par with the Ars Nouveau Lectern. Now for power, I think I want to go with a combustion generator from Cyclic. This is really nice. Uh, a lot of generators will produce anywhere between 40 RF per tick, uh, 60 RF per tick to 80 RF per tick. And this particular one, believe it or not, produces 80 RF per tick, which is going to be very nice and is one of the best coal or fuel burning uh, generators that are currently in here. Of course, outside of the power mod, which does take a little bit more to kind of get started. I wouldn't necessarily consider getting started with power starter anything. Um, so uh, outside of that, we are, we should have everything I think we need. I just need iron and a little bit of gold to be able to craft the storage scanner itself. This little thing is so nice uh just a simple compact way of scanning all of your inventories and just putting it all in one place now something i will note as this has been bugged in rf tools storage for quite a while whenever you use double chests it's it's uh definitely not recommended because if you account for both sides of the double chest which it will show in the storage scanner well, it's going to end up showing duplicate amounts of items that you have. It doesn't let you craft with duplicate amounts, but it will it will over show items. And so what I actually want to do is take some barrels and we're going to dive into another mod. So with these barrels, we'll also do torches and we can take some redstone torches and combine them with our barrels here. And I'm going to do like 32 for right now. And this will convert them into sophisticated storage barrels which are super, super nice, by the way, to uh, to have hold of. So we can use these to upgrade and we can upgrade them into copper ones, into iron versions. Definitely recommend jumping into iron versions as soon as possible, especially since we have these. And that'll essentially act as like a big double chest in this place. So just to show a normal barrel like this, normal size inventory for a barrel, as you would expect, 
But if you upgrade this even to iron level, oh, it gets so good. This right here, then it turns into a double chest, taking up the space of a single barrel. Oh, and does it get very, very large? Yes, yeah, so you can take this all the way up to netherite, and those inventories are massive. Now, I know some of you really, really loved, including me, the storage upgrades that these containers had that would go in these slots, where you could have up to four of them in here. Well, I reverted that back to now allowing you to still have four instead of being limited to two of them. Ah, you are going to love that. It allows these things to store so many items. Now, another thing I can do with sophisticated storage is make a storage controller and a storage tool. And these things are going to make honestly connecting the storage scanner a little bit easier. So instead of connecting to all of these individual chests or any chests that we have around, instead we can just link it to one central controller, which is going to simplify things a little bit and also make it a little bit easier on our storage scanner. So the things that we're going to need for this is going to be a chest and we should have chests just laying around. Any chest should work. And oh, actually, no, it needs to be a barrel, doesn't it? Ah, that makes total sense. So now we have our barrel and voila, we have our linker and we also have our storage controller. And this can go really anywhere. How about we put the linker down here and it's going to look kind of interesting, but we're going to have the linker that is connected to all of these storages down here. What you could also do is place this directly connected to these and it'll connect automatically to everything. But I also want to show you the functionality of the storage tool. So I can go ahead and shift right click on the controller, and then I can just start right clicking all of these inventories to link them to the main system. And so now these are all linked and we should now be able to set up our storage scanner. Now, I think the way I want to handle this is placing our storage scanner right here, placing our combustion generator down below, and this will actually allow us to send items into our storage scanner. So, you know, instead of having an output that is on the bottom here, instead we can just output directly into our storage. And so we don't have to worry about this down here. But uh, I think we got a visitor now. <laughs> Let me go take care of this guy real quick. Boop, and there we go. But yes, let's go ahead and take some charcoal. We'll go ahead and get that started. That's going to get this generator up and running, and it's going to get our storage scanner powered up. Now, this interface may look a little bit wild, but I promise it's not too bad. We just need to increase the range. I invited their entire family. Oh my gosh. No! Okay. What? <laughs> I'm trying to explain modded here, okay? Goodness. Anyways, if you just expand the radius on this, um, we can actually see all of the inventories within range, and it goes up to 20 blocks, which is pretty nice. But we don't need it to scan that far. Uh, we just honestly need it to scan, like, just a couple of blocks around it. Um, and it looks like three blocks is just fine. What we want to do is click this button uh, on this, and we want to make this routable. So all we have to do is click the little star, and uh, on any inventory that we want to be routable, and you can have multiple. And then once we have that clicked, we can just click the all routable, close the list, and here is all of our items that are connected to our storage controller. And this is just a super simple inventory manager. We can search right here, so anything we want. If we want wood, we can search wood, and we can just right click it to pull it out, or left click it to pull it out. Um, and, and then crafting works a little bit differently in here. And this is where I think is its weakest sort of part. When it comes to crafting, you're going to have problems crafting certain things. For example, like glass. Uh, this is where RF Tools just does not like certain things. So it is going to be best in my case used as a means of, for example, just crafting normal things um, and just crafting a few things here and there but mostly to be able to just search my inventory to pull items out. It's very, very starter, very, very beginner, and definitely a nice alternative to just searching inventories manually. Uh, but we will be moving to Applied Energistics or Refined Storage very, very soon. I do feel that, however, Refined Storage is much simpler. I think for this playthrough, Applied Energistics might honestly be the best option. But I might leave that up to you guys. I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Let me know, which one would you prefer to see me play with? Applied Energistics or Refined Storage? I don't know. Find it down below. So now that we have storage, let's go ahead and fully automate this EMC production. So I went ahead and converted this into a better version of a barrel, the sophisticated barrel. 
um, by using a upgrade. And I'm going to want to use advanced hopper upgrades. These things are pretty darn cool and they're not super bad to make. They essentially allow us to send or receive items, pull or push items out of our inventories here. And we can do that with these right here. So if we go ahead and clear these settings right here, we can go ahead and on the front, we want to set this to push. So what we're gonna do is we are going to push items out. Now we have a couple of filter options up here for push and pull. And I do believe the top is going to be pull and the bottom is going to be push. Uh, and so we can filter some items in these slots. And of course, iron is going to be the thing that needs to be filtered. I don't want to be sending poppies into something, for example, like this RF Tools Crafter. Now, the crafter is going to start receiving items. Okay, so in the barrel, I think by default, this is set to block. We want to set it to allow. And now we should not see, as you can see, it's pulling out. We should not see poppies going in. So there we go. We have to make sure allow is set. Um, and then... This does need power, so we are going to need a combustion generator or a generator of some sort that is going to be attached to it, and we're going to need to give it some fuel. Uh, but I then want to use a limited barrel, which is going to go up top, and this is also going to have a hopper upgrade in it. So on the side, we're going to use this advanced hopper, and this we're going to go ahead and clear, just like so. And the bottom right here, we're going to have this set to pull. And so what this should hopefully do is pull from here. I don't know if this actually has to pull from the bottom of the crafter. We're going to find out once we get this up and running. I do know, however, we are going to want to go ahead and get our recipe set up. And this is very simple. Uh, we should just be able to put a philosopher's stone in here, the one that we have, and then the four that we see here. And then we want this to be exit C, I do believe. So that way the philosopher's stone goes back into this inventory and not into the output. Um, and so once that is set, we should be able to hit apply and give this some power. And that should start crafting ender pearls just like that. Very quickly, by the way. And it's even in slow mode. And you can see the ender pearls end up going directly into our sophisticated storage, essentially automating this. And later on, we could automate it even further by having these, for example, automatically go into our storage. And so now that this is done, I have a bunch of EMC now, which is pretty nice, just from setting up a very simple farm. And something else I wanna mention, this is 100% expandable. So once we get ourselves more villagers, it's probably gonna be worthwhile to make more of these to make our iron production rate a bit higher. But this is all incredibly early, early game. And this is a very nice way to generate a little bit of early game EMC. There are gonna be way better ways of doing this, but early on, this is one method. Now, of course, if you have any other methods, I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. Let everybody know what ways you've done it, or you can share it over on the Discord. Discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Join the amazing crew today. I would love to hang out with you over on the Discord and chat. We have a lot of channels open there. By the way, also, if you experience any issues with this pack, be sure to check out the issue tracker. All of that is listed on its Curse Forge page. I am actively in development while I'm recording these episodes. So yes, I would love to hear issues over there if you would. Um, and of course, guys, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. I appreciate you guys so much. And with that appreciation, I want to share it with the supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Orthros. Thank you so much, by the way, for your amazing support and choosing to support me over on the Discord by becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Thank you so, so very much. Guys, I appreciate you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.